Welcome to chapter four of the book of Colossians. As we close out this course, uh, we're going to end with a couple of sections. I'm going to walk you through a couple of sections of scripture uh, that we will hopefully glean some learning from, and we'll wrap up this great little letter that Paul wrote. So let's uh, get started in that. The first verse of chapter four says, Masters, treat your bond servants justly and fairly, knowing that you also have a master in heaven. And so the first point, just right there in the first verse that I want to point out, is that those of you, us in leadership, those of you that are perhaps managing or supervising others, uh, remember that those in our care were to treat with appropriate care, were to treat with love, respect, and dignity. And that's what Paul's getting at here is making sure that we are treating them justly and fairly. And so I would encourage you, if you are in leadership or, or you're in an uh, uh, have the ability to supervise others, to make sure you do that uh, in with great care and justly and fairly, as the scripture says. As we move on into the chapter, I want to point your attention to verses 5 and 6. Walk in wisdom toward others or toward outsiders, making the best use of the time. Let your speech always be gracious, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. I would encourage you to really think about these two verses. Take a moment, pause, uh, memorize these two verses over the next few days because they're, they're packed with powerful learning, packed with powerful meaning for every Christian. So let's unpack that a little bit. Walk in wisdom toward outsiders. You know, in these days when we engage culture, and we're to engage culture, we're not to assimilate with culture, we're not to avoid culture, we're to engage culture. Culture, And Paul would say in this verse to walk in wisdom toward outsiders. So while we engage culture, we do so with the wisdom of God. We do so in ensuring that we're engaging others uh, with strong wisdom, with knowledge, with love, with compassion. And then he goes on to say, making the best use of our time. Again, not wasting our time. He says in another uh, letter, redeeming our time for the days are evil. And so he wants us to make the best use of time. Then in verse 6, he says, let your speech always be gracious. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a tough uh, verse to follow. That's a tough command to follow. Sometimes we're not always gracious, uh, whether it's a spouse, whether it's an employee, staff member, a student, a, a child. Uh, we're not always gracious in our words. But Paul says here, let your words be gracious. Then he says, let it be seasoned with salt so that you may know how you ought to answer each person. And even Christ himself said in the Sermon on the Mount, that we are to be the salt of the earth, that we are the salt of the earth, adding flavor, adding the, the right ingredients in bringing out the best in people, and that's through the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're, we're to be seasoned with salt uh, for others so that we can answer others. When they're asking, why are you so happy? Why are you so joy-filled? Why are you so loving? Why are you so caring? Uh, and that's because of the gospel of Christ. That's because of the transformation that Jesus has done in each one of our lives. When you move on into the chapter from verses 7 until the end, verse 18, Paul then lists a series of friendships, a series of relationships that he introduces. And he talks about people like uh, Tychicus. He talks about people like um, Aristarchus, Mark, Justice, Epaphras, and he spells out, these are fellow brothers, these are workers in Christ, these are servants in Christ, uh, those who have, who have prayed hard and worked hard for the ministry. He talks about Nympha and the church in her house and Demas, and he says, give my greetings to the brothers at Laodicea. And he just encourages us, closing out this book, with how important relationships are. And then he closes in verse 17 and says, hey, and say to Archippus, 
See that you fulfill the ministry that you have received in the Lord. So even in closing this letter to the church at Colossae, he wants to ensure that one of his brothers understands, hey, make sure you fulfill what God has told you or given you to fulfill. And that's a great coaching moment for us as well, is being uh, aware, encouraging one another, and coaching one another, and understanding these relationships, deepening our relationships with others around us so that we feel free and understand what God wants for them, and we coach them in that. So three things I would make about this chapter, or three statements I would make about this chapter, um, is... Surround yourself with godly people, not yes people. Surround yourself with godly people who will pour into your life. Iron sharpens iron, as it says in Proverbs 27. You want people that will pour in, that will challenge you. And this is what Paul is referring to. And, and this list of people he goes through, this is, uh, these are these types of people uh, that he's referring to. Paul's companions worked hard for the ministry. That's the second point, is surround yourself with people who are like-minded in ministry, who want to take action for the gospel, who want to move forward in the gospel, who want to move forward in ministry. doesn't mean we don't have friends who are non-believers, because certainly we need to interact and engage and evangelize, right, for the sake of the gospel. But surround yourself with close friends that really understand ministry, that want to be a part of ministry. Uh, lastly, Paul encourages and challenges these people himself, including with that closing challenge. Hey, make sure you follow through with the ministry that God has given you. So don't be afraid to challenge others. Don't be afraid to coach others and uh, give them teaching, praying for them, uh, encouraging them. Uh, etc. So that wraps up the book of Colossians. Uh, we want to encourage you as you close out this course. And we also want you to know that we are praying for you. And may the Lord bless you and keep you. And may his face shine upon you. May he be gracious to you and give you his peace. We love you all. Mm-hmm.